Hey everyone, Cody here, and today I want to talk about does originality matter when it concerns success? So do you need to be original or have an original idea in order to be successful? This actually applies to many different uh, kind of niches or just really different sectors of life. Uh, and I'll cover a couple of different ones, but uh, mostly I'll be focusing on creative endeavors. So if you're a song maker or an artist, uh, or if you make films or doesn't really matter, right? So we're going to come kind of come back to that. So essentially that question, you know, does originality matter? Um, is it required in order to be successful? And when I say successful, you know, I mean by that, you know, measured either by renown. So are you well known, well liked, well received or successful commercially? So how you kind of define that is really up to you. Commercially is usually the, the bigger one because commercially means that you are on your way to kind of being professional at that thing. Um, but you know, either way, we'll just say successful in kind of a general term. The short answer is yes, it does help, but no, it's not required. So let me kind of break that down. So let's say that you have an original idea. You have an original idea for uh, painting. So, you know, I'm a painter, so we'll, we'll kind of stick with that. So you have an original idea and um, let's say it's a painting method that nobody's ever thought of, or you use a, a medium or a material that no one else is using uh, to create your paintings. Well, the thing is, is that if nobody else is doing it, automatically that's gonna give you an edge, right? So if you were, if you had this method or you had a material to create art that no one else was doing, automatically that originality is going to give you an edge because you know, if people start kind of getting wind of it, uh, you know, it goes out to press or, you know, people just start talking about it. People are kind of interested in it because it's a, uh, a new thing or it's, it's kind of undiscovered. Well, really, the, uh, the chances of that kind of giving you a little bit of notoriety is probably kind of high because, you know, again, it's unique to you. It's original. So if you have a an original idea, and yes, that probably would give you some kind of advantage. And this also goes with inventions. You know, anytime we see the first version of an invention that really nobody else has kind of made, usually the, the first set of inventions of something that is kind of new and pops off are usually the most successful. And then the things that come after that or that, that are kind of clones, they can kind of cash in somewhat on the success of that, you know, that trend, but they're not usually as successful as the original one. Uh, and it's, it's funny because I kind of have an example of this. So recently I started drinking kombucha tea um, and I learned that GT Dave is the guy that does GT's uh, kombucha. And that guy was actually the first person to bottle it here in the U.S. So not the first person to ever make kombucha, but the first one to bottle it here in the U.S. and start selling it commercially like that. Well, that guy has 40% of the market share of kombucha today. And before this, you know, he had a larger share because he was the first one doing it. So he's super successful. Now these other companies kind of follow that. And yes, they are successful because they're also selling that product, but you know, they weren't the first to do it. So they didn't have that original idea. So if you have an original idea, then yes, you probably will get an advantage and it's a little bit easier to find success, at least in the short term, uh, by having that original idea. However, that's not gonna carry that success on because the problem is, is that even if you were, say an athlete that was naturally inclined or you know, you know, you had that inclination to, uh, naturally gifted, I believe is the phrase that people use. If you were naturally gifted in a specific sport, right, say uh, baseball or basketball, even if you were good in that thing and, and you were kind of original as, as a person, right, you were kind of an anomaly, even if you were good at that sport, if you didn't continue to put in the work, you wouldn't stay good at it. So it's okay if you have an original idea, but really what's more important is the implementation of that idea. So let's say that you don't have an original idea. Well, then you're in the boat with most of us because the, the, the truth is, is that most of us don't have original ideas. And even when we think an idea is an original to us, there probably is other people out there in the world that have a similar idea. This is kind of like uh, VHS and Betamax. You know, they came out around the same time. So people had similar ideas to put, you know, uh, movies on cassette tapes. Uh, same thing is with uh, phones and fax machines and, and all these other different things, right? So a lot of times, you know, people will have the same ideas around the same time based on the culture and society and technology. Uh, but the thing is, is the implementation of the idea is usually 
sets is what sets apart those companies that are successful from the ones that aren't that don't really go anywhere. So if you don't have an original idea or you're doing some type of creative work or even, you know, a sport or an activity or something that has already been around, but you want to be better at it, you want to be successful, then it comes down to the implementation of the work. Because the thing is, is, uh, you know, it doesn't matter if you have an original idea or not. Ideas are a dime a dozen and ideas come and go and you could have a great idea and it might be original to you. But really, that idea isn't necessarily an original idea. It's just a remix of other ideas that you've heard or you've had in the past that kind of combined and it became an original idea. So, again, it doesn't really matter if you have that original idea or not. You know, ideas come and go. Anybody could have an idea. But the hard work is what really sets people apart. And coming back to the uh, example of like athletes, you know, I've heard that Derek Jeter and Kobe Bryant, both of these guys actually work longer hours. They put in more hours in practice than most of the other athletes. And they're already the best at what they do, but they still put in more work because the work is hard. But, the you know, having some kind of edge doesn't necessarily keep you successful in the long run. So what are some things that you can do if you don't have an original idea for what you're doing? Maybe you're creating paintings like I am, right? A lot of the, some of the paintings that I make, such as the, the Pollock style paintings or the Gerard Richter style paintings, the scraped or the, you know, these action paintings, those are not my idea. I didn't have the idea to make those. There are people before me that have made Pollock style paintings or scraped paintings. There were people after me that made Pollock style paintings, uh, you know, and, and, and the cycle just continues, right? These are not ideas, uh, brand new ideas. And even the ideas of the painting styles that I've come up with, like these line paintings or the fractal paintings, those are original to me. But again, those were probably, those probably existed in some other form before I started doing them and someone else will do them after me. So again, even if it's original to me, doesn't necessarily mean the idea is a, is purely original. It kind of comes down to, you know, what else can you do that might be original? Well, one thing that you can do that if the idea itself is not original, and you'll see successful products do this, is they'll find an original way to market it. This is why uh, you see a lot of these commercials for like Purple Mattress, right? So Purple Mattress, um, you know, has these really creative ads and it's because, you know, the company behind it um, is just a very clever company and they're, they're approaching the marketplace differently. They come up with, they've come up with, uh, you know, creative ads for a product that's just, you know, as maybe as good as any other product. Now, it might be a good product, don't get me wrong, but the way they approach it is creative. And some of these other products, like if you've ever seen the ads for William Painter glasses, uh, you know, again, it's a creative product. There's other products like William Painter glasses, except for like the little the little thing for the bottle caps. That's actually unique, I think. Um, and again, that kind of sets them apart because that part is original. But a lot of these other brands, you know, if you go to a store, you're going to look at a shelf and see six to 12 different products that all look the same. Well, these marketing companies know that, you know, and so knowing that the product is just like anybody else's, they have to find some kind of original thing about that product to sell. And a lot of times in marketing, we call this a unique selling point. And I actually, you know, did marketing before this. So the unique selling point is, is something about that product, at least one thing about that product that makes it stand out from the rest. And so having, you know, that about your art can help you kind of be more successful by getting more, you know, known or, or selling more. So if you can kind of find out what your USP, your unique selling point is for your art or your creative endeavors, that will kind of help you. So what is it about, you know, maybe the materials you use or uh, your story or, or why you're doing it? Or, you know, do you give part of it to charity? Do you, you know, approach it do you only work on, you know, Saturdays because of X, Y, Z? You get what I'm saying? So is there something about the art that you can kind of share with other people? Uh, part of the art that I do is gloss enamel. Not all of it, but some of it's gloss enamel. That in and of itself is, it's not an original thing. I wasn't the first to come up with it. But in promoting my art, telling people it's gloss enamel as opposed to acrylic or oil, that kind of sets it apart. Oh, then they start asking, well, what's, what's gloss enamel or how do you do that? You know? Again, it's just one thing. So if you can find an original way to market it, then you can do that. Now, lastly, 
let's talk about you know being successful without originality can you be successful without being original well yes yes you can obviously if you don't have that slight advantage of originality then it's a little tougher i mean let's not let's not lie and say that you know everybody just can get on by hard work you probably can but it's going to take you longer but the thing that i found is that a lot of people who are successful even say that it's the work that that really got them there and keeps them there. And ultimately, I think that that's what it's about. Persistence, I believe, is more important than anything else. It's like these videos, right? I wasn't the first to have ideas for videos. And some of the ideas for the videos aren't my ideas. You know, I see other people talking about things, and so I make a video on it. So it's not an original video idea. But in creating video after video after video, you know, I'm becoming more known because I'm putting in the work, right? So, and the persistence just kind of builds on itself. And it's not like just a slow kind of, I don't know, it's not like a, a regular uh, curve. It's not correlated. It's exponential. So, you know, I'm getting more followers now than I was at the beginning when I was still doing the same amount because the success builds on itself. So ultimately, what I would say out of all this is that, yes, originality can help. It can give you an advantage towards success, but it's not a guarantee and it's not going to keep you there. Even if you got there because of one unique original thing, eventually that will kind of die off, right? People will just get used to it and other people will start to copy that. It's not, it doesn't take very long for people to kind of start doing the same thing as everyone else. That's just human behavior, right? We we model what we see. So eventually that thing that you're doing that might be unique at the beginning and give you that edge, it will eventually be copied and other people will do it and they'll offer different alternatives that will kind of set them apart or maybe they'll sell their product cheaper than yours. So yours is now obsolete or, or something, right? It's just, that's just how it goes. That's just always how it goes. So ultimately, the I would say originality is not the key ingredient to success. It's perseverance. It's putting in the hard work day after day after day or whenever you can and just continuously building on it even when you don't feel like it. Like the thing is is that every everybody wants to kind of be successful quick. They want to start selling art. You know, if you make art or songs or whatever, you want to start selling a lot of those right away. Um, and a lot of times it just doesn't work out like that, you know, and you see success stories. Oh, yeah, I sold, you know, 10,000, whatever in a year. I'm just making stuff up. But my point is, is we always see success stories. We always see people who who made it off of their stuff. Well, it's either it either a is a fluke and it, that's not an everyday case. They're not the majority or B. Uh, I know I, I held up one and then did two, even though it's A and B. Anyway, B. Uh, they are a success, but they did something that worked for them, but that doesn't necessarily mean it works for everybody, right? Uh, I will say that the, the fastest way if you want to sell anything is through ads. So if you could run Facebook, Instagram, or Google ads, which they're all kind of expensive, um, I believe YouTube ads are pretty good. So if you can make short videos about your products, you know, if you're comfortable doing that, YouTube ads I heard are pretty underpriced. I have not run them myself, so I couldn't verify that. I've just heard from other people that YouTube ads are pretty cheap. I have done a few Instagram ads. They didn't really go anywhere, but you could definitely try. Facebook's super targeted, so if you can run Facebook ads, um, find a way to run Facebook ads, do that. But ultimately, that's kind of where I wanna leave this video, is that while originality does give you an advantage, it's not required to be successful. And, you know, there's, uh, I, I wish I remember who it was, but I, I heard a few months ago of a, a quote that said, uh, it took me eight years to become an overnight success. And what that means is that, you know, those people that are successful now, it's like, it's like almost like they just rise up to fame out of nowhere, but you don't see all the grinding that they did for years and years and years to get to that point. So, you know, you just got to keep putting in the work. Sometimes I don't feel like making videos or painting, but I know that if I just, get lax and I just quit and give up, then I'm not going to get where I want to be. So it's, you just got to keep pushing forward. But anyways, I, uh, I hope that, you know, helps. I, I don't know if you get something out of this video. I really hope you do. Um, but I'll see you in the next video. Could be a painting video. I'm not sure. I've got a couple of more ideas, uh, that we, uh, we might throw out there, but anyways, I'll see you guys in the next video. Take care. God bless and stay safe. Bye guys.